Good evening, friends. This is going to be another pinball machine, spherical, spherical pinball machine episode podcast of my YouTube channel, trademark YouTube style, which is to ramble around but in a fairly tightly wound or tightly connected network of topics, so even though it may seem like I'm jumping around almost randomly from A to B, B to C, the overall graph, or you could call it a network, or you could even think of it as a polyhedron, or even as a planet, like welcome to Planet X, or whatever planet you want to call it, I think of Little Prince, the book, right, small book for kids, not just for kids, often read to kids, read to me, as a kid, then, you know, learn to read because really short, small sentences and so forth. But uh, Little Prince keeps encountering planet after planet and, you know, each one has its flavor. It's kind of like Star Trek or some show where, you know, you're visiting different worlds. So here's a world, that of my YouTube channel. This could also be a Substack podcast that you're listening to. Like exactly what, how this gets to you is maybe, uh, there's a, osmosis is actually one of the themes here. Let's, let's take that as our opening, osmosis as a theme. What does that even mean, osmosis? It's like when something just sort of spreads by word of mouth or it's usually in chemistry it's more technical than that it's like when something diffuses through a medium often stochastically or randomly without any specific plan or push it's not like a a voltage it's not a pressure thing it's more almost that things just organically grow in that direction without even a lot of enzymes without a lot of catalysts it just happens naturally and spontaneously I, I think a dictionary meaning of osmosis you might want to look up at this point and just you know add some texture if you're not familiar with the word and so a discipline like synergetics like what we take up here on this channel uh, one way it percolates outward is by the associations the interpersonal associations associated with this material, right? With synergetics, it's study, obviously, Buckminster Fuller, the author. But also, let's go to Ed Applewhite. He's like the number two on this project. And he's got his own resume, his own history. And people get curious about that and dive down into that. And so, for example, you have Mike Achera here talking about the time he got at Applewhite to sit for an hour just for like a portrait because Michael's an artist among other things so he was you know privileged to draw the guy when someone's sitting for a portrait during a busy conference or whatever you don't want to mess it up or have to start over so I imagine it was a little bit stressful but according to Michael's account it was a pleasant experience actually and so I, this is on LinkedIn, right? He's sharing this. So I'm, you know, following what he posts. And right underneath, I'm like, yeah, Ed, coincidentally, I was on a Zoom meetup today, not today, this week, where that was another, that was a topic as well. Because a friend of mine had just gone to Washington, D.C. for the first time, but is also very, another one of these, you know, teachers of the same material that we're into here. The 4D meme, for example. This lesson is going to go, here's how it's going to go. We're going to follow Applewhite down the rabbit hole a little bit into what's called a coda, where we've done done all this before on this channel. Not really breaking new ground, but new materials always coming in, being added. And then from that coda, we're going to dive down into a math topic, right? Because we're going to be in the Math for Wisdom coda, And we're going to take a look at this exercise I've proposed. It's kind of an exhibit, like in the World Game Museum, you could say. It's an exhibit. What we want to, a classic demo, we could call it. 
And it features, now if you're familiar with the computer language logo, it features four sea turtles. Because sea turtles can go omnidirectionally, right? They can swim in the ocean, whereas in the computer language logo, your typical turtle was confined to a plane. So forward, backward, up, down, compass directions, north, south, east, west, this kind of thing. Looking down on a piece of paper like planar geometry, and without a lot of emphasis on how this plane ultimately, if you zoom out, becomes the surface of a planet. Because we're always on a planet. If we're in synergetics, we're on a spherical surface, convex or concave, you could say, as a first approximation. These infinite planes to infinity, we don't need them. You might have them, you might imagine them, you might need them for your geometry, but we specifically define them out of our geometry, infinite Pretty much anything, right? We can get back to infinity as a topic. We always do. We come back to it. So we're going to do that. We're going to dive down into this Python computer language implementation of a certain demo in Synergetics with involving sea turtles. But let's not go straight there. Let's wander a bit, come back out, look at the Applewhite materials. So what we... Uh, have recently reconnected with, actually I wasn't doing this research, but looking over Daniel's shoulder, I see that he found buried in Paradise Mislaid, which is one of that Apple White's books, a very comprehensive kind of book, a, a foray through the biology of his day, which is pretty close to our day. We're not talking this was, you know, published, I think, uh, what, early 2000s? I'll have to check the date. Okay, here we go. 1991. Paradise Myth Mislaid. Birth, Death, and the Human Predicament of Being Biological. And there's no hardcovers in stock at the moment. I have, I have it. Here's my copy. Sitting in the dark here. Sitting in the dark. So what Daniel discovered, and here's the interesting thing, is that Applewhite dove into the study of ants and ant colonies in his quest to explore the, the answer to the question, what is the meaning of life, with the question emphasis on what is life itself. In other words, what is the biological what is the consensus on what is, how do we define life? And you kind of get the feeling that there is no way to nail that down in a very simple sense, like one line definition won't do. And you can easily, I mean, we, we still question, we don't have the answers today. A lot of people, when they look at this whole question of AI and AGI and what's the difference between Real intelligence and artificial intelligence, what's the line between them? Is there a line? They're asking in a similar a similar question about, like, is there a point where A turns to B, where non-life turns to life? And we used to, to think that might be at a very small level. Like, if you go down, down, down into the cellular level, we'll say cells are alive, but then there's organic molecules less complex than cells that aren't alive. And somehow the virus is where the two sort of vectors or the two <clears throat> the two attributes come together. Is it alive or not? It becomes acute in a sense in virology. That's because you do have propagation there on a somewhat parasitic model. There's replication though. There's, you know, what do you need to be alive? Can we say that a virus is a robot or a bot of some kind, a machine of some kind? But, you know, what do we mean by machine? If everything's a machine, then the distinction between machine and not machine doesn't really, doesn't really make sense. So that's a deep, you know, we're going down that rabbit hole, as I said we would. That's kind of what this book is about, but it focuses on ants a lot. 
in its certain chapters, and that was the topic of Daniel's PhD, is studying ants in the field for real, like actual ants, right? Not just metaphorical ants, but we are interested in the cultural, the templates the ants provide, like they're kind of a white noise into which you can project complexity and civilizations and division of labor and a lot of concepts that matter to us at the human level, we can find analogies in the ant world and we can think about ourselves with ants as a kind of mirror, as a kind of projection. How exactly that varies, right? It's partly what's being cataloged in this codicomb, I call it a codicomb. It's not what it's called. It's called a coda. But it's like a catacomb. It's like an ant colony in a way because we crawl around in here. Some of us are adding to this particular one. This, this, this file belongs to Daniel. He's the owner host. And he's invited various philosophy-minded creatures such as myself, such as the Wondrous Wisdom Colony, which is adjacent or embedded. Math for Wisdom we think of as the larger theme park, like a Disney Disney World. And I like do the Epcot Buckyball. And then the, there's the Wondrous Wisdom is like the Magic Castle, which uh, you're welcome to go visit. Lots of focus on ants there, too. So that's looking into Applewhite. I could make some other connections here. So onwards from from this coda, which is also full of synergetic stuff. Like I'm trying to show you that osmosis in process, because this is a active learning or active inference, I should say. Active inference is another big topic in this uh, coda comb. And that's branches out all over the place everywhere. So it's like this is kind of a cultural nexus going on here. And I think to summarize what's happening is it's a place for subcultures to synergize. And we find those synergies happening all over the place. But here's one where you could come visit. And let's see, getting into this sea turtles demo what i want to show here and this has been a topic in the math for wisdom repo as well as coda uh, are the quadrate coordinates right so this is a xyz like coordinate system i talk about it a lot on this channel and what we're going to do is allow four turtles starting at the center, arbitrary what we call that, just pick a point in space, any space, any point, call that the starting point. And if, you, if you've seen those demos with the, uh, the lamppost and the so-called drunken walker, somebody like, he can walk to any adjacent chess square uh, at random. We use pseudo-random number generators and we let this guy walk from a lamppost randomly away from the lamppost. But he can also walk towards it. It's like at any one square, you've got your adjacent squares to choose from. But now in the ocean, with the turtles, we don't want to be confined to a plane. We want, and we don't want to use cubes either. We want every, it's like sphere packing. We want every rhombic dodecahedron <clears throat> to have 12 neighbors through the diamond face centers. You've got 12 diamond faces. You're a turtle. You're at the middle of this thing. And through each of those diamond windows that surround you is another rhombic dodecahedron with its own 12 windows and so forth. And so every, every hop, you could say every tick of the clock, each one of four turtles jumps into its neighboring, a neighboring rhombic dodecahedron. Right? We don't know which one it's going to go to. It's random or pseudo-random. We generate random numbers. So we let these turtles, here we are creating the turtles. They're just, you know, they're uh, quadres, they're vectors. But we have the ability to add, wherever we are in space, we can add one of these 12 spokes to the 12 neighbors, to one of the 12 neighbors. So you jump to one of the 12 neighbors and then we do it again 
for all four turtles. They all jump again, jump again, jump again, however many jumps you want. They wander off. Sometimes two turtles might randomly stay closer together than other times. You know, it's like you get an irregular tetrahedron at the end, meaning the four turtles, practically no chance any two of them are going to be on the same, um, in the same voxel or in the same box or same dodecahedron. Could be, though, and probably there's no two coplanar, three coplanar, I should say. There's no three of them. Well, wait, any three turtles are going to define a plane. So any three turtles are going to d d define a plane, but the four turtles are going to define a tetrahedron with an inside and an outside. A random tetrahedron in closest cubic packing space, or what we call the IVM. The IVM is our name for the same scaffolding or lattice. FCC is another one. So you start with four turtles. You let them all hop, let's say, a thousand jumps. Stop the clock, and now draw edges between all turtles. So each turtle to every other turtle. There's only four turtles, so you'll find each connected to the three others. That's going to be six edges. So you have an irregular tetrahedron. And what I'm showing here, running this Python code, is it lets the turtles all hop a thousand places, comes up with the tetrahedron, and tells you the lengths in all of all six edges. And because I'm using SymPy, it gives them, and in terms of second roots and stuff, not just decimals, but actual algebraic expressions for the 12 links, six links, I mean six links. And then I feed those six links into one of my volume computers, by which I mean I have a short computer program that will take those six edges and output the volume of the tetrahedron. But here's the thing. Because we're down the Bucky Fuller at Applewhite Synergetics rabbit hole, as we do this, we are using what are called tetra volumes, which means our unit of volume is not the cube, but the tetrahedron with edges equal to the diameter of an IVM ball. Remember the IVM ball packing? That's the ocean that we're in. You could say infinity in all directions, but we don't need that. We just need a very large sphere packing and inside of this ocean we can play these turtle games and we can show that every time when we stop the clock at say a thousand jumps the uh, resulting irregular tetrahedron or one chance in a billion regular tetrahedron uh, is going to have a whole number volume a whole number volume in tetra volumes and we've seen a proof by Bob Gray. I don't know if he still has it on him, but if you start with, uh, you can use induction, and you can show how if you're starting from a whole number volume and you let any one of the corners go to the 12 neighbors and that it's still going to be whole number, that pretty much gets you going in terms of why you never don't get a whole number. And that's just an interesting demo. That's that's an exhibit we want in our World Game Museum, right, of partially overlapping exhibits that help, you know, with the principles, getting through these concepts, right, of IVM, scaffolding, turtle graphics, 12 around 1, random choice hopping in space, all this kind of stuff. It's very good conceptual machinery to have like in your right brain, if you're a graphical designer, architect, anyone who's spatially fluent, you'll find that Synergetics is giving you, equipping you with some really useful visualization and graphical um, conceptualization tools, which you can use on and off with computers, right? It's not always about using computers. You've got your imagination. Okay, so that was the demo. This is a subculture we're talking about as 4D. I write in my blog about it, like how we don't need to buy that space is 3D, right? In our sort of covens or enclaves or wherever it is we meet and speak amongst ourselves, we have our own sort of shop talk based in synergetics in some cases. And that's 
you know, how we kind of can tell if we're uh, in the same lineage. Like I can look at Daniel's stuff, watch his YouTubes and say, yep, there's a lot of synergetics in that and so forth. So now that you're aware of some of the memes, you're going to be able to pick them up in your environment more. Like when I first learned what the IVM was or the Octet Trust, I started seeing it everywhere because it is much used in architecture. Same with geodesic domes. You may think of Fuller in connection with the geodesic domes, which are parts of spheres. And if you haven't tuned that in, start with that. Go back to the spherical pinball metaphor that opens this video and think explorations in the geometry of thinking. Graph theory, polyhedra, everything sort of hangs together, and that's kind of your metaphysical gravity in a way. It's what keeps you going forward, thought process, re-vectoring, re re finding new trajectories for various key words is another way of putting it. It just happens spontaneously. You don't have to wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to make... IBM means something different tomorrow, but then that might be your job if you're an ad man or a PR guy or something. You may be in the meaning uh, revectoring, word meaning revectoring business. And I'm just saying that when you get into the bubble of synergetics, a lot of words that have familiar meanings get revectored. They mean something else. They go on to, uh, they, they click in as a different. Uh, subculture and that's why a lot of people tune out synergetics say it doesn't make sense or whatever it's been slow to percolate by osmosis into the curriculum because it's hard to read and i'm hoping with videos like this you'll be able to decipher it more successfully all right good talking on onward